Hello everyone. We hope you're all well and ready for today's new topic on the ATEC channel. Today we're going to take a look at the potential of the new American military drone, and in particular at its unusual features. The American Air Fleet has a silent killer in its ranks, a little iron bird with an impressive destructive capacity, the MQ-9 Reaper, also known as the Predator. Drones are unmanned aerial vehicles that fly autonomously or by remote control. The Reaper is powered by a 950 horsepower turboprop engine to carry up to 15 times more ammunition. It can reach a maximum speed of 480 kilometers per hour. This makes it one of the world's largest behemoths, 20 meters long and capable of carrying up to 1700 kilograms. What's more, it has a range of 1850 kilometers and can reach an altitude of 15,000 meters making it the perfect tool for surveillance tasks and as a support force for ground troops. Reaper drones are remotely controlled by a pilot, sensor operator and an intelligence coordinator, but can fly unassisted for over 30 hours. Each has 368 cameras capable of capturing 5 million pixels, which can create images of some 1800 million pixels, while its video camera collects 12 frames per second. The drone is armed with missiles that can destroy moving combat vehicles such as helicopters and aircraft. Its weapons capability includes 230 kg smart bombs that track their targets. It's able to produce detailed images using laser telemetry and a designator rangefinder, devices that are used to guide and locate the ammunition in its weapons. Laser rangefinders record the distance to a target by sending a laser beam as a pulse. This pulse is sent to the target to measure its distance from the aircraft and to locate the target, it uses the telemetry designator, a laser light source that points at the target to indicate which bombs or missiles will miss it. If a target is marked by a designator, the invisible beam is fired. The entire Reaper system is transported from one location to another using a C-130 Hercules transport aircraft. To extend its range, two 380-liter fuel capsules were installed under the hulls, increasing the range by 37 hours. The new Reapers also feature artificial intelligence and an artificial radar called Lynx. The upgrades to the new M19 Reaper were carried out by the same company that designed them, General Atomics. This was done in collaboration with the Joint Center for Artificial Intelligence for a contract worth $100 million. The Department of Defense's aim is for the Reaper drones to be able to autonomously detect objects in their path. The artificial intelligence used is based on the Digital Protection Assist System. On the other hand, Lynx is a high-resolution radar built by Sandia National Laboratories. It weighs no more than 50 kilos and detects targets 3 kilometers away in any environment. The resolution can be modified by the ground operator, reaching a resolution in focus mode or directly as a topographic map. Its user interface allows the view of the target to be modified as if it were a video camera, by zooming or scrolling the page. The Reaper has been imported by France, the Netherlands, the UK, and Spain mainly for surveillance tasks. Operators pilot the drone using integrated software. They can track up to 12 moving targets at the same time. If they need to attack one of these targets, they can send each missile within 30 seconds. On the other hand, these drones can carry out surveillance tasks with great efficiency over long periods and at high altitude. The New York Air National Guard used them in 2008 for its Combat Air Legion. This was the first time a military combat unit has been replaced by drones. The drone is also used by U.S. Customs and Border Protection to protect its territorial lines. The U.S. Air Force unit has already acquired more than 300 upgraded versions by 2021. A letter from the U.S. Air Force proposes to reduce fighter aircraft purchases in the 2022 budget. In this regard, Gordon Jondro, acting secretary of the Air Force, stated that the current fleet is sufficient to meet operational and training needs. There is no need to buy more aircraft. The aim of the new strategy is to diversify defense assets. It'll manage the use of a family of interconnected systems to reduce costs and increase interoperability. Among these defense systems, future purchases of Reaper drones are planned by the U.S. Air National Guard, some constituency legislators, and Congress. The latter has earmarked $286 million for the purchase of 16 additional Reaper UAVs. David McHugh, Air Force Deputy Chief of Staff, pointed out there is a fleet of over 300 Reapers, but that they have a 15-year lifespan. However, further improvements will extend their service life by several years. Instead of continuing to market the old models, General Atomics will manufacture new versions with integrated upgrades. 
The next generation of the Reaper will extend its traditional capabilities to air combat, military base defense, and electronic warfare. This translates into the addition of an improved airframe, advanced radar, and sophisticated software. The man who invented the Predator, considered the father of the drone, Karem may not have planned to produce a deadly combat drone. Indeed, his basic objective was to design a flying robot. Today, this technological revolution remains in the military domain and is increasingly gaining ground in civil aviation. Born in Israel, Abraham Karem became interested in aircraft design as a child. As an officer in the Israeli Air Force, he learned how to design and maintain real aircraft. At the end of 1973, he worked on an aircraft designed to fool radar signals. But the project failed because Israel did not follow up on the program, preferring to buy planes from the United States. It was then that Karem realized that drones had real potential in this sector. Following this realization, he decided to try his luck in the USA, where there are more opportunities for entrepreneurs. While developing his company, Leading Systems Inc., and working on his project, Karim surrounded himself with two other engineers, Jack Hertenstein and Jim Mackin, to develop a lightweight 90kg device, including a camera at its end. This prototype christened Albatross flew for 56 hours. Following this success, DARPA financed flight tests for the Albatross. This was followed a few years later by the development of the Reaper's predecessor, the Amber UAV. It was powered by a two-blade wooden propeller at the rear of the fuselage, and featured tricycle-shaped landing gear that could retract. V-shaped stabilizers on the tail ensured aerodynamic stability. The Amber was radio-controlled and could be configured to take off and land like a conventional airplane. Its wings could fold in on themselves, thus escaping thermal updrafts. As a result, it could perform vertical landing, ideal for landing on a narrow target. Finally, the expansion of digital technologies enabled the Amber to become the future Reaper. GPS technology was booming, as were new radar designs. These were all advances that Karem used for its drones. General Atomics worked with Karim to design the deadliest killer drone in history. Drones were democratized thanks to a shift in perspective and research. At the time Karim was developing its drones, there weren't as many scientists who thought that unmanned flight lasting several hours could be possible. Given the many advantages offered by this type of machine, demand from the military arose and led to the development of the model we know today. If you enjoyed our topic of the day, please feel free to like this video. If you'd like to see more videos of this kind, please subscribe to our channel. You can also check out our other videos, which are sure to please you. See you soon on ATEC.